So let's talk about the only three money principles that you must know. You need to know to get rich and stay rich. The name of the game is not to get rich, but to stay rich. Okay. And there are a number of principles. You know, when I look through my own private journal, all the mistakes that I made, and I have about roughly probably twenty nine, thirty of them. And but I picked the three that I believe are the most critical, and which is what I'm going to share with you today. The king of high ticket sales, world's highest paid consultant, media celebrity, multi millionaire entrepreneur, acclaimed TEDx speaker, international best selling author, Dan Lok. So, money principle number one, and that is what I call mastering the wealth triangle. Mastering what? The wealth triangle. Now, for my inner circle members, I've been hammering this concept umpteen million times, but this might be new for you. It's very simple, but incredibly profound, and you see why in a moment. This is not some theory or some philosophy. You will not get this from a book. I pioneered this. I created this. So basically, it's the essence of my 15 plus years of financial and business experience. Experience getting down and dirty in the trenches, rolling my sleeves in the world. So this will give you the who, what, why, and when of money. Okay. So here's how it works. Now the wealth triangle has three pieces. How many? Three. The first piece is what I call high income skills. What is it? High, high income skills. High income skills. Now, how I define high income skills is a skill that has the potential to make you over a hundred thousand dollars a year, a hundred thousand dollars a year, or sometimes ten grand a month. However, you want to use it, but a hundred thousand dollars a year has the potential to make you a hundred thousand dollars a year or more per year. Now, in this case, you are trading your hours for dollars, but you're trading your hours for high dollars. You're turning your skills, your experience, your talents, and you're delivering value to marketplace in exchange of money. So you are selling your time, but for good money, high income skills. Okay, and number of skills like say my my mentees, you have Hassan, hot copywriting. It could be consulting. It could be doing social media management.、Uh, I have a friend of mine who is actually a ballroom dance instructor, and he makes over 100k a year as a ballroom dance instructor. That's considered a high income skill too. So whatever high income skill that you might be thinking of, now why is that important? With your high income skill, it gives you income and it gives you comfort. It provides that stability in your wealth triangle. In your wealth triangle. Now the second piece of the the puzzle, the second step is what I call scalable business. What is it? Scalable. Now what is a scalable business? Tell me. Something that you could repeat, something that you could grow, something that you could grow without a lot of infrastructure. Is Westron a scalable business? No, because every time you want to open up a second location, I got to sign a long lease. I got to put in a lot of money. I got to renovate the place. Got to hire a lot of people. Yes. Yeah, break even funnel. Maybe, maybe it's an internet type business. It could be an e-commerce business, but something you could grow without a lot of infrastructure or without hiring a lot of people, without a lot of overhead. Now, why is a scalable business important? Because your high income skills provide you with income. Yes. Yes. Your scalable business provides you with cash flow. It provides you with cash flow. That's why the second step. Now you can grow it. Third component. That's what I call high return investment. High return what? Now, how do I define high return investment? I define high return investment as an investment that will provide you with a ten percent annual return year in and year out, a minimum of ten percent. Minimum ten percent year in, not just this year, but year in and year out. I consider that a high return investment. In some cases, it could be more. Now, high return investment is not to provide you with income, but it builds your net worth. What is it? Net your net worth. Your net worth. Here's the triangle, and here's why it's profound. So I'll go a little bit of detail. So, high income skills you make your money. Basically, it's high income skills is you making you money. How many got that? Yes, you make your money. 
This the scalable business is now people or system making you money. Yes? Hello? Yes. yes. High return investments now is money making you money. Yes? yes? So three very, very different things. Now, here is the challenge. This will solve all your, people ask me, what should I do? What should I invest? A lot, a lot of people sometimes come up to me, what business should I start? This will answer, I'll answer all the questions today. Question number one. Dan, I am, I'm just getting started. What business should I start? My reply is none. Don't start a business when you have no clue and no business acumen. Because what is the very first step you should do? Hello? Develop the high income skill first. Make that 10K a month first. Trade hours for dollars. There's nothing wrong with that. Trade hours for high dollars because this gives you stability. How most entrepreneurs, they don't have high income skills. They just jump into, a, they think it's a scalable business. They think the life saving is to it. You see a lot on Dragon Center Shark Tank. I don't know anything about business. I came up with this amazing idea. I mortgaged my house. I put everything I got. I borrowed from my family and friends. And I have now 2,000 board games in my garage. Dragon, please give me some money. And the dragon says, no. Sure. Which is a, a, a joint venture broker? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. Very good. Very good. So what happens is in business, same thing with my own career, and over now so many years, do you have ups and downs in business? Yes. yes. What I said, right? Your your cash flow pattern. Some year you're good. Some year you're not good. But very early on, since when I was back in early 20s as a copywriter, and then moving to consulting and coaching and speaking, my high income skills, every year I strive to increase my earning ability with my high income skills. So although I made some bad investments, I've done like 10 tech ventures as an angel investor, lost money on all 10. That tells me I'm not a very good tech investor, right? I thought I know internet marketing, but shit, right? So I learned my lesson there, like you can't, not one. All 10 lost money, right? And I'll share some lessons with you from that. So, but all these years, my high income skills is very, very, every year is very consistent. That gives me the base. So I make, I lose money from my investment, but I can always count on who making me money. Myself making me money. So I never, ever stop. As I build my scalable business, my income skills is making me money. When I get on stage, I'm speaking gig, I get 15K, I'm making money. Nothing wrong with that. When I sign up a consulting gig, I make 100K, nothing wrong with that. I'll take the money because it gives me stability. I know I'm trading hours for dollars. That's okay because I want to have the wealth triangle, yes? Now, so people ask me, what business should I start? I say, none. The first thing you got to do is high income skills, right? Question, Nathan. Can your high income skills also be your scalable business at the same time? Possible. It's possible. Now, very good question. Second thing. Now, then, now I have my high income skills. Let's say I'm making 100K a year. What happens is over the years, here's what I've learned. Less than 6% of the population makes over $100,000 a year. Less than 6%. So when you're making 100K, your income bracket, you're at the top 6%. Less than 1% of the population makes over $325,000 a year in income. What happens is, somehow, I don't know what it is, but as a person, as an entrepreneur, I notice whenever someone gets over that 10K a month mark, something changes about them. Suddenly, they can see, well, I am now among the top income earner in society. It's very rare I see someone who makes 10K a month drop back to making 2K a month. Because the new 10K a month, talking about psychology, because it becomes a new comfort zone. It becomes a new comfort zone. I don't know how it works. I don't even care how it works, but I know it works. Whenever I see someone get through the 10K, they might stay for 10K in a long time, 
but it's very, very rare. 10 k suddenly to jump. Because what if the income drops? They'll do whatever they could to get back to that 10 k Which Anam has been through that, right? You drop, it's like, you know what? I got to get do whatever I could to get back to that 10 k That's one thing. When you have your high income skill, it tells me a number of things about you. When you have the high income skill, it tells me you're probably pretty good with people. And you'll probably have a pretty good work ethics. And you're probably decent at selling. And you're delivering a bit of, quite a bit of value to the marketplace. Does that make sense? Otherwise, you wouldn't be making a 10K. So it tells me a lot about you. When you have these qualities, you take all this. When you transition into a scalable business, it makes a lot more sense. You lower your risk. Versus, I, I don't know anything about business. I hate my job. I've been working in corporate in 20 years. I'm going to jump into business. That's why people fail because they don't have the high income skills. Let me give you an example. Let's say I have been doing social media. I'm a social media manager. And I've been doing e-commerce, I'm working with clients, I'm helping them with the social media, driving traffic to the website, all of that stuff. And now I'm making 10K a month. You with me? Now suddenly, okay, I see an opportunity here. Maybe there's a product that I could sell online. That I could use social media, I can use Facebook to drive traffic to it. By the time I start that, I already have my skill. I already have that basic skill. I take my success, here's the concept, write it down, stacking on your success. Not from scratch, something that's successful. I've got what it takes. Now I take what I know, now I just do it for myself in my spare time. You with me? With for myself in my spare time. And this would grow, and this would grow. So then, when should you invest in something else? When your scalable business makes so much money, you don't know what to do to it. That's when you invest. You don't invest when you are still, oh man, I'm just struggling, I'm making a few thousand. Here's what happens. People, they have a job, making $2,500 a month. They see an infomercial, some guy talking about buy real estate, no money down. Oh shit, that's awesome. Maybe that will help me get off my job, get off my red race. Let me go buy the course for $69.95, two easy payments. I buy that, I learn that I'm gonna buy real estate, and they buy a couple pieces of real estate. Suddenly, tenant moves out, the toilet broke, now what? They're fucked. <laughs> they don't even have enough money to fix the toilet. Now they, don't, they go into foreclosure, and they lost everything, and then they say, now, real estate? Doesn't work. That's why it doesn't work. Because you don't have the first piece. You don't have the first piece. You got to get to that first piece first. Now here's what's very, very interesting. I know a lot of people who do very well, they don't even have a scalable business. You can be very wealthy with a high income skills and you make your money and then you put in the high return investments, you could do very, very well. I don't believe, I truly don't believe everybody should have a scalable business. It's not for everyone. Not everyone is cut out for that. It's not, not, and you don't have to be that to do very well. Like a friend of mine who is a photographer, just a photographer in Vancouver, very high end. I mean, he takes photos for Jim Patterson's, his whole team. He charges a lot of money, makes six figure income a year, and he started investing in real estate 20, 20 somewhat years ago. Today, he has a portfolio of about 250 units. It's worth about 20, 25 million dollars. High income skills, put money aside, invest long term, 20, 30 years. He's got a huge portfolio. Yes? Does he have a scalable business? Yes, Nathan? It's not the business type, it's how you do your business. So let's say if you are doing SEO as a sole proprietor, a lot of products by yourself. Let's say you're making 10K a month. That's high income skill, right? But suddenly, let's say, you know what? I'm going to transition that into, I'm going to do reputation management for a bigger company. I'm going to take on different type of clients. So you build your business model in a way. You have a team that you're not doing as much as the work. You're leveraging the team system technology. Suddenly, it becomes a scalable business. So it could be that, hey, you know, if you want me, it's going to be five grand a month to do SEO, me. But if you want my team, it's two grand a month. So now you're both going on. Does that make sense? So it all depends on how, not, it's not what you do, it's how you do it. Yes. 
So is uh, in a high income skill, does it have to be a job or can it be a business? Did I say high income job? <laughs> the difference is a job, it's you're dictated by somebody else to say how much you're worth. A skill, you're dictated by who? The marketplace. And you can increase that. So one of your goals should be increasing that every year. I don't care if it's 5%. I don't care if it's 10%. I'm making 100K last year. This year, I want to make 110K. I want to make 120K. You keep increasing that, increasing your value, yes? Now, let me give you one more example. Sometimes people say to me and say, well, you know, Dan, um, let me give you an example. Let's say network marketing. Is that a scalable business? Done right. Network marketing. You know, some people like it, some people don't like it. It's a scalable business. The challenge is 99% of people don't make money in network marketing because they are using that as an escape. Please write it down. Please write this down. You can't escape from something. You got to escape to something. You can't escape from your job and say, I jump into something. Oh, maybe that will help me get rid of my job. It's not like that. Because they don't have the skills in the first place. And they jump to something, and that's why, oh, it's so hard to talk to my friends and family, and I get rejection, I'm done, and this MLM shit sucks. It has nothing to do with that. Are there people making a lot of money with network marketing? Yes? Yep. Are there people making no money with network marketing? Yep. Are there people making a lot of money with real estate? Are there people making no money with real estate? It's the same. It has nothing to do with that. It has nothing to do with that. So with this, now here's what happens. When your business is doing very well, and you're making, generating a lot of cash, a lot of cash. Now you put into high return investment. So you make it, you grow it. Now you kind of pocket here as a high return investment. You put in there, you don't touch it. You just let it grow. It grows your net worth. It grows your net worth. And every, every month, you look at your net worth statement. It's, in, in, it's getting better and better and better and better. That's stability. Income, cash flow, net worth. Here is the thing. Here's the thing. When you skip, and people so jump into that and they skip that, with this triangle, now you know where you stand and how you, what you should focus on. Actually, you know what, Millie, let me give you two minutes. How long? Minutes. Just discuss around the table what you've learned so far. Okay, go. Let's take a little bit deeper here. Let's take a little bit deeper. Now, why is it important to have that high income skill before your scalable business, because here's what happens. Let's say you start a, an e-commerce business, and it's growing, and you're acquiring customers, and, and you're driving traffic, it's doing well. And now, you know, like, you know what? It's good, I can scale this thing. My question is, where do you fuck do you come up with the money to scale it? Because all your money, it's put into business, the marketing, the inventory. You have a model that works, you have no money to scale. Now, at this point, can you bring in outside investors? You could, you give a percentage of the equity and all that stuff, you could. But when you have your scalable business first, now you have money to scale. Because you know, my bill, my bill is taken care of. It's okay, I, I've got money. Now I can have my business, talk about we investing all your profit in back your business. See, some, some, a lot of people, they only have a scalable business, they want it to grow, but they also need to eat. So they take profit out, pays for the day to day. And that slows the growth down. They, they're not growing as fast as they want. Versus, you know, my income skills, I, I'm making money. My business, just let it run. Let it grow. Make sense? So, it you know, very much depends on, so people ask me, well, Dan, what should I invest in? It's very simple. If you're at the stage of high income skills, what should you invest in? Yourself. You better be, fuck that 10% shit. You better be investing 30, 40% of your money into upgrading your skills. Maybe it depends on what you need. Maybe it's personal development. Get your head screwed on straight, right? Let's fix that. Whatever mindset, whatever limiting belief, maybe you need to go through that. Go to Tony Robbins. Go through that shit, right? Walk on fire. Go through that shit. I went through that shit. It's okay. Once you get through that shit, you have the mindset. And now, you know what? I need some skills. Let me, let me read that book. Let me, let me hire the coach. Let me go to that workshop. Let me do whatever it takes to upgrade my skills. Work on that a lot. Now, when you are, have a scalable business, when you have a scalable business, what should you invest in? Hmm? Team. What if you have a business? I can tell you. Very simple. The highest return you'll get from your business is when you invest in marketing. The best return you'll get is marketing. What kind of investment you could put in a dollar 
And if you have a scalable business and it's converting and it's working well, can come up with two, three, five dollars. That's two, three hundred percent return. It's criminal in the stock market. But in this business, is it, is it common? You spend a little bit of money, maybe even $500 in marketing, you get a 10 grand sale. Is that possible? Yeah. It's, it's that kind of return. So why would you put it into some mutual fund that getting 8%? It makes no sense. It makes no sense. And who has more control? Your business, who has, you have more control over your business or some mutual fund? So it's very simple. If you're a scalable business state, put most of your money, take your profit, put it into your business. Marketing, hiring better people, team, just grow the shit out of it. Just grow. Let it grow. Let it ride. And at the same time, keep working on yourself, your skills. That's why, you know, people come to me and say, oh, I've got, I've got 10 grand to invest in. What should I do? I said, go to a fucking seminar. <laughs> Improve your skills. Because the fact that you're asking me you don't know what to do with the 10 grand tells me you don't know what to invest in. And you probably don't have high income skills. It's, it's, it's the worst thing you want to do is, oh, I'll buy this stock or all that. It's not about that. I'm not here to give you a stock tip or, or buy that or what. It doesn't matter. The only, I'll go through the level of investors. It's, it's those investors who don't know what they're doing. That's why they jump from one thing to another. Here they're doing day trading and they're doing something else. Yes, Nathan. Yeah. I know, I mean, 90%. I lost all my money. <laughs> I know. I think it's like 90%. Like I said, out of 10, I, not even two makes money. All 10 lost money. Right? Um, so, I don't have skill, obviously, as a professional. I was a professional for 13 years. And for 13 years, extremely distinct. For me to do the thing for 13 years. Yes. And so then I went to high return investment. And what I have to, for 13 years, the lesson learned is I didn't learn myself. Mm. So after that period of time, even though I made you know, very good money, is that uh, fundamentally that was the most important thing. So as I restart my career, uh, that was exactly that. Yeah. First, all the money goes into some rest in myself. Yeah. And all of it for myself. Yeah. Because uh, you could. It's the easiest. When you have no skill, that growth is it's incredible. When you have no skill, you learn a bit of skill. And you, let's say you, you are, you, you, how many of you are in sales? Every fucking hand should go up. <laughs> How many of you in sales? Okay, we're all in sales. Let's say you're closing 10%, 1 out of 10. You learn some sales techniques. You, you get some sales training. Suddenly, you're closing 2 out of 10. Instead of 10%, you close 20%. You just double your income. How good is that? It might take you an hour. It might take you just watch one video. It might take you one day. Who knows? But is that a good return? Yeah. You cannot get that kind of return from any other investments. That's why I keep learning. It's like... People, I, I'm amazed that people would spend the money on, on the big plasma TV. I love my TV, don't get me wrong. It's, they spend stuff on that and yet, oh yeah, I gotta go to this workshop and spend a thousand bucks and oh, I don't have the money. It's un unbelievable, yes. Please. So, I love what you said about being able to apply your own skills to your strength and so forth. Yes. Because, uh, in my line of work, I see uh, say CEOs or yes. founders, yes. they try to build a scalable business. Yes. But they're actually not meant to do that because they don't have the leadership skills. Yeah. And so I really like that. It's the first time I've ever heard it because I always thought you had to build a business. You, know, you had to, you know, you could do the whatever five figures, six figures, five figure a month, or six figure, and then scale it, and then you invest, you know, like a stair step. Yep. But not everyone is meant to be a big business owner, I realize. Yeah, no, and you don't have to be a big business owner to do well. Like, because what happens is we see these entrepreneurs on, on, in, on, on, on magazines, right? And, and read the article and, oh, that guy sold his company for $50 million. That guy sold his company for $100 million. You never see the guy, oh, that guy just lost $100 million. <laughs> he is not on the cover of Inc. <laughs> So you see one guy that made it, you don't see the 10,000 that died. I am saying most people died, but it's not very entertaining to talk about it, right? Yes. I think uh, Elon Musk's story was really interesting. Yes. He built this company, sold it for billions of dollars, had a vision, uh, started two companies, almost lost all, of, or he lost all of his money and was in debt, and then barely... He was close, days from bankruptcy, right? Yeah, yeah. When he raised the money. Together, he said one of the smartest people yeah. 
Yeah. And now he said, oh, Elon Musk is like, you know, a tech, you know, he's like, he's like the next Steve Shop. But, you know, the Tesla. <laughs> you don't have a TV? It's a good thing. It's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. So does that make sense? Yes? Okay, let's keep going. Warren Buffett said, investing in yourself is the best thing that you can do. Anything that improves your own talents, nobody can tax it or take it away from you. They can run up huge deficits and the dollar can become worth far less. You can have all kinds of things happen. But if you've got talent yourself, you've maximized, here's a key word, maximized your talent. You've got a tremendous asset that can return tenfold. That's from Buffett. That is from Buffett. That's why I never, never, over the years, stop improving my high-income skills. It was six-figure, then it's seven-figure. I never, doesn't matter how good my business is doing, how great my investments are doing, I'm saying, no, I've got to work on my skills. I've got to work on my skills. Because I don't know. I don't know what is going to happen. Yes? What is the next skill? The next skill I'm developing? Okay, very good question. So I'll take you through my career because it gives you a clear picture. The very first high-income skill that I developed is copywriting which is how to write ads, how to write ads, how to put words in print to sell. And from copywriting, I noticed I wasn't getting clients because nobody was buying, and I was trying to get clients. So I learned sales, how to sell on the phone. From sales, then I learned how to do marketing. I was doing marketing with people. Then from marketing, because copywriting, as you're working with clients, I noticed they don't just want you to write craft the words or the headline. They kind of need some marketing strategy. Well, how am I going to use this stuff? So evolve transitioning into marketing, consulting, coaching type of work. From there, I evolve into speaking. Because people are asking me, well, how do you do some of these things? I'm as a speaker, you get paid. And then platform selling, which is very different. It's selling from the platform. They're making money, right? From there, then also transition into deal making, which is kind of what you do now: joint venture and deal making, brokering. So these skills I've developed, honed, and still honing over the years, right? And then now managing my money and then investing as well, right? So you see, over the years, I have this treasure chest, I have this all these tools on my tool bag that I can pull out anytime and I can do it. I can make money with it. Does that make sense? So you, in at first, you might just have one. But eventually, you might have more than one. You might have two or three. I have a whole bunch. And then you might kind of merge them together. It's a possibility as well. So I never stop. I never, never stop. Make sense? Okay, let's keep going. So most common events, investing questions I get, Dan, I've got 10K, what should I invest in? I already answered that. Dan, what do you invest in? Does it matter? Because it all depends on what I invest in. It doesn't mean what you should invest in. If I buy, you know, invest in oil and gold, does that mean you should invest in oil and gold? Hell no. I don't know. It all depends on where you're at the wealth triangle, right? So high income skill, invest in yourself. Get training. Upgrade your skills. Should I pay off my debt first or should I invest first? I'm going to get to that. Should I pay off my debt first or should I invest first? Here's an interesting cartoon. Sure, 2% may not seem like a lot, but it's compound. If you invest $1,000 now in just 10 short years, you have, let's see, $1,219. Okay, so compound interest isn't some magical force. Yeah, I'm just going to try to make more money. So as you improve your skill sets, you have more income coming in, you can scale your business faster, or maybe just put more money into investments. Put more money into investments. Conventional wisdom teaches you how to get rich on your current income. Here's what I believe, and I'll show you the numbers. If you can boost your income to 120000 a year, 10 a month, you should be able to create a million-dollar net worth, not counting your house or car, in 7 to 15 years, assuming you keep your expenses in check. Keyword, assuming you keep your expenses in check. So you can get to that 10 a month, even you don't never, ever, ever have a scalable business. If you keep your, keep your expenses in check, you can get to that million-dollar net worth in 7 to 15 years. Depends on what you do. Yes? Okay. 